everybody, I'm Ben Steery. I'm a Totus Tuis missionary this year. I'm currently in my fifth year at Michigan Tech. Um, and I am going to give my kind of full faith journey testimony today in some capacity. So, I jump right into it. Um, unlike probably a lot of the other Totus Tuis missionaries, I was not a cradle Catholic. Um, I really didn't grow up in any faith tradition. And so, as I was growing up, I, I guess I remember like, even being pretty young, asking myself pretty explicitly, like, what is worthy of a man's heart? And there are like a few natural things to try after you ask yourself that question. Um, I was really close with my kind of like group of friends, and uh, I didn't have any siblings, so this like group became like my brothers, and, and for a time that was like the most important relationships in my life was, was that group. But, you know, as you get even older, you start to be a teenager, you start to realize that that's not going to be sort of like the center of your life. It's not going to be this group of friends. And you start to think like, hey, maybe like romance, right? Maybe that's the, that's the, that added intimacy, that added intensity of the relationship will be the thing that brings me ultimate satisfaction. But I came to find out that they can never satisfy that need for a god. Um, and if you try to make them a god, the god of your life, uh, healthy people won't want that. And some people may want that but it's not going to result in a healthy relationship. And so I had this like this passion, this intensity in my heart, but uh, there were all these relationships that I couldn't, the, the, their capacity to hold my heart was limited. They couldn't take my whole being, right? It's, it was too much for those relationships to handle. And so eventually, by trying to like pour myself out totally into these things, they would collapse and they'd become corrupted and they would ultimately fall apart. And so now, I'm starting to get a little nervous. I felt like I was in this box and I had these concepts in my box, concepts like family or romance or friends or like a career. And there was nothing in my, in my framework that I could make the center. And I started to panic, right? Just like filled with anxiety all the time, thinking I'm, I'm never gonna find what should be the center of my life before I die. And so I was constantly in this like state of anxiety and eventually I just wanted to like break this box that I was in. It's like obviously there's something wrong with this box. It's not right. It's not working for me. It says it's not built for humans. There's not it, there's not the right things for humans in my box, and so eventually I just started like swinging in the dark, trying to push my box wider and fit more things in. And the way that manifested itself was I started experimenting with like drugs, because I just wanted to have a spiritual experience. I needed something that was outside of my out of my little box. And I, I broke the box, I, I pushed outwards, but it didn't, it wasn't filled with anything. I was just in a scarier and weirder box. And eventually I was just empty. I had no idea. I, I felt like I had tried something really, really like out there in order to put something meaningful in my box, in my framework, in my worldview. And all I had done was made myself emptier and more numb and ultimately like more afraid. And so I kept going like that for a few years until eventually I decided kind of on a whim to take a 
philosophy of religion class. And I think at this time, I probably thought Christianity was sort of just like a feel good thing that people like made themselves believe just to feel better, just so they didn't have to like face their deaths or something. And then I took this class and suddenly I'm getting like Aquinas' five ways. Uh, that's, those are proofs for the existence of God. And I'm like engaging with the Catholic intellectual tradition basically. And some of the arguments are convincing. Like I just never been presented with a good argument for the existence of God before. And I was confused Right? Like, how could nobody have said this to me before? But almost immediately, I knew I had to take it seriously, I guess. And so, I just started studying for, like, months. Just all of my free time outside of, like, my normal classes at Tech, I would just be, like, reading apologetics and like reading weird philosophy books because I, I think in my heart, like I knew that if it, if this was true, like if I could really believe in God, that that would be the thing that I could put in the center of my box. And it was so close, but I, but I, I wouldn't let myself just be fooled into it. I had to, I had to really get there with my mind first before I could just accept it. And I was eventually received into the church. But I still wasn't resting in the truth of God's love for me, of our salvation through Jesus Christ, because I didn't... My mind wouldn't let me yet. So one of the things that happens if you read a lot of philosophy, a lot of apologetics, is you end up reading counter-arguments. And it got to the point where I was like fully convinced intellectually that God was real and that Jesus is the Son of God. But I would hear like one good counter-argument from like an atheist or from a non-Christian, and I would be like, totally destabilized, just like obliterated by it. Even though I had like 20 good arguments for why I thought God was real. And it's not this, that's not like this one little argument got rid of all those, but it's, I just had a tendency towards doubt so that this one argument would completely throw me off. And eventually I, I came to realize that if God's real, he'll handle it. He'll reveal the errors in this argument. He'll reveal the higher truth. And that's not up to me. I don't, I don't have to know. And you know, eventually, we come to have a relationship with God. And these sort of questions about philosophical proofs aren't as relevant anymore in our lives, right? As we, as we pray and we experience God's love and mercy, those things become good, but not necessary, not the root of our faith. I think I'm still kind of in that transition period between agreeing with the faith in my mind, moving to agreeing with the faith in my heart and in my will. And I suspect that that's a process that's going to continue till the day I die. But it's happening. I hope some of you can relate to that. Thanks for listening to my testimony. May God bless you. Bye.